In the given problem, we have an eye section and we are asked to find the centroid of this component. As we did in the previous problem, we will solve this in few simple steps. So let's get to step number one. At first, we need to see if there are any symmetrical axes in the component. In this problem, there is one symmetrical axis in the vertical direction. We name it yy axis. It means the whole component is symmetrical with respect to this axis. Observe that the left and right parts, they are identical. So whenever there is a symmetrical axis, the centroid will be on this axis and that saves a lot of time in calculations. So always look out for symmetrical axis. Then finding the position of centroid means finding the x and y coordinate of centroid on the component. We denote x coordinate of centroid as x bar and y coordinate as y bar. It is just for the reference. In this problem, as there is a symmetrical axis in the y direction, we need not find the x bar value because the centroid should stay somewhere on the y y axis. Now let's move on to step number two. The component like this are made of simple shapes. Here this is I section is made of three rectangular blocks. So in any problem, we need to find simple shapes which makes up the component. The reason is simple. We know the formulas to find the centroid of these simple shapes and calculations will become simpler. We also have a formula where these individual centroids can be used to get the centroid of the whole component. So we will mark three components as rectangle 1, 2 and 3. Now let's get to step number 3. This is where the actual calculation starts. We need to find the area of these simple shapes for our calculations. So let's consider rectangle 1. It has a length of 100 mm and a height of 20 mm. As we know the area of triangle is length into height. So that will be 100 into 20. So this area will be 2000 mm square. As we need to remember this area, we will have a small tabular column where we can write these values for the reference. Similarly, take rectangle 2. Length is 20 mm and height is 100 mm. Then the area is length into height. So we have 20 into 100 which is equal to 2000 mm square. The same way we can calculate the area of rectangle 3. The length is 150 mm and the height is 20 mm. So area will be L into H 150 into 20. That will be 3000 mm square. Now we are halfway through the problem. There are three more simple steps before we get to our answer. Let's move on to step number four. As we discussed at the start of this video, we need to find centroids of each rectangle and combine it to get the final centroid. The centroid will be at some distance from the reference axis that is x and y axis. This is called centroidal distance. So in rectangle 1, the centroid will be at the center. We call this centroid as G1. We know the centroid of rectangle will be at half of the length and half of the height that is L by 2 and H by 2. We need not find x1 as we know the centroid will lie on the symmetrical axis yy. We need to find only y1. The distance of centroid g1 from x axis that is at the bottom will be y1. So y1 will be 20 mm the height of rectangle 3 plus 100 mm the height of rectangle 2 plus half of the height of rectangle 1 that is 20 by 2 10 mm. We need to consider the height of all these rectangles in the calculation because we are measuring the y1 distance from x axis that is at the bottom. So we need to travel from bottom x axis till we reach centroid g1. So that is why we have the heights of all these rectangles put together. So y1 will be 20 plus 100 plus 10 that will be 130 mm. So we tabulate this value also. Similarly in rectangle 2 we need to find y distance from g2. So y2 will be 20 mm which is the height of rectangle 3 plus half of the height of rectangle 2 itself because the centroid will be at the half of the height. So that is 100 by 2. So y2 will be 20 plus 50 that is 70 mm. The same formulas apply to rectangle 3. So y3 distance from centroid g3 from x axis is half of the whole height that is 20 by 2 which is 10 mm. After all these calculations, we have our table like this. 
it has the area of each and the centroidal distance from x axis that is y1 values now let's move on to step number 5 this is the penalty maze step to calculate the centroid of any component we have a formula for y bar which is given here that is y bar equals a1 y1 plus a2 y2 plus a3 y3 whole divided by a1 plus a2 plus a3 so now substituting the values from the table y bar equals 2000 into 130 plus 2000 into 70 plus 3000 into 10 the whole thing divided by the total area that is 2000 plus 2000 plus 3000 on simplifying y bar will be 430,000 divided by 7,000 on further simplifications we have y bar value as 61.429 mm and x bar will be on the symmetrical axis that will be the total length divided by 2 so 150 divided by 2 75 mm so we have the answer x bar is 75 mm and y bar is 61.429 mm in step 6 we will mark the centroid on the given figure and write the answers we can plot this on the figure as g we cannot measure it accurately but try to keep it as close as possible to the values so that's the solution for problem 2 centroid of i section understand the logic behind each step and follow this step by step method which makes your problem solving very easy in the next video we will solve another interesting problem see you there